guys, it's Crystal, and this is a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. Okay, so inside here is a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus that was provided by T-Mobile. Big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. And no matter which variant of the Galaxy S8 you pick up, you're gonna have a great unboxing experience, I think, because there's a little surprise in each and every box. So let's go ahead and open it. Slide that off. Oh, oh, it's what color is this? I can't let me see. Let me get a better. The box says orchard gray, so I'm guessing this is orchard gray color. But no matter what color, it looks beautiful. Let's see the rest of the box. Remember that little surprise I was saying? Ooh, is this black? Wow, it's a black brick. Oh, that's nice. And the headphones. Yes, with every Samsung Galaxy S8, you get these $100 value headphones, AKG headphones, which is awesome. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's like not that bassy. They sound really good. They're definitely much better than the earbuds you usually get with phones. All right, let's power this baby on and look at that beautiful display. Anyway, as you saw from my unboxing that I filmed several days ago, I thought this orchid gray color was gonna be like some crazy pastel purple or pink color, but it's actually pretty subtle. Once I took it outside though, the color does come out a little bit more in certain lighting conditions, but for the most part, it's pretty toned down and neutral. It's not too crazy, which I actually really like. And for the tough guys out there, don't worry, you won't feel embarrassed if you go for this color. The Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus look straight out of the future. And it's actually pretty mind-blowing when you think about the fact that this was only three years ago. What makes the phone feel so futuristic is pretty much just the fact that the top and bottom bezels are a little bit smaller than they were before. It's weird because just a few millimeters have been trimmed off, but that went a long way. That mixed with the curved left and right edges gives you the illusion that you're just holding a screen. Even the corners are curved to match the body. This phone has the biggest screen I've ever seen at 6.2 inches. And when you put it next to some other guys that only have 5.5 inch screens, it makes them look like dweebs. Pretty much every phone out there has a 16 to nine aspect ratio, just like our TVs and most computer monitors are. But the S8 and S8 Plus have an 18.5 to nine ratio. So yeah, they're just a little taller than usual, which means you can see much more on the screen without actually having to scroll. It's got one of the best displays on a phone too, I gotta say, crazy vibrant. It's AMOLED, which means those blacks are gonna be 100% black with those pixels actually turning off. Now there's a lot of changes when you make an almost bezel-less phone though. Like now that bottom bezel is so tiny that there's no room for a physical home button like on every other Samsung phone. But Samsung says it's still there. It just lives under the display now. And we're calling it the invisible home button. Now all that fancy talk means it just vibrates when you hit it like on every Android smartphone. But it does have a trick up its sleeve. Not only can you tap it, but you can actually press down with force and the vibration feels a little different. It's kind of hard to explain what it feels like, uh, but have you ever played around with an iPhone 7's home button? It feels kind of similar, but I think the iPhone's a little more convincing. Like, this just feels more like a vibration. And of course, if there's no physical home button on the front, there's no fingerprint scanner on the front. So Samsung decided to put it on the back instead, which sounds like a great idea until you realize, oh my God, it's all the way up there? I love when fingerprint scanners are on the back of phones because that's where your finger naturally rests. But girl, there is nothing natural about reaching that finger all the way up and then accidentally smudging the camera. I've pretty much given up on using the fingerprint scanner and instead settled for the new iris scanner. Once you get used to holding the phone far away from your face and holding it right, it kind of just becomes just as fast as a fingerprint scanner used to be. Of course, wireless charging isn't going anywhere and we still have that IP68 water resistance in case something like this happens to you. <laughs> oh my God, it wasn't recording. It wasn't? When it comes to the camera on the S8, at first glance, it looks like not much has changed, but there's actually a lot of software stuff going on here that helps in certain situations. You really can't notice these differences in the bright outdoors, but pictures are still incredible. 
lots of vibrance to these, although that contrast is cranked up a lot, which some people love and some not so much. The HDR mode is fantastic, making sure your subjects are bright without making your sky blown out. The real difference is you can notice in low light, there's actually a little less noise and graininess in photos now. The selfie camera actually got a pretty big upgrade from a 5 megapixel sensor to 8, so that pretty much means your selfies are going to have a little more detail to them, which is great because that means your pictures are technically going to be better quality, even though that means you can see the pores and makeup mistakes on my face better. Anyway, I was thinking of doing a full in-depth camera comparison between the S8 and the S7, so if that's something you guys would like to see, leave a like and let me know in the comments. As beautiful as this phone is, I was kind of afraid to see what the software actually looked like in the inside because in the past, them was some ugly icons. But now things are looking much nicer. Everything looks a little more clean and we kind of have a new theme with simple lines that don't connect. And yeah, it may not be my favorite type of design choice, but definitely much better than previous Galaxy phones. I love how you can finally rearrange the navigation buttons now so you can put the back button on the left which is where he belongs if you ask me. Then there's Bixby, which is Samsung's new assistant, kind of like Google Assistant or Siri. You can access Bixby by swiping to the right or pressing the dedicated Bixby button on the left side. Yeah, I know, Samsung is really hoping they use this a lot. It brings up this little information center that shows your schedule, weather, health stuff, news, really whatever you want. Bixby can also be used in the camera app and can actually recognize what you're taking a picture of, which is awesome for finding images similar to the thing you're photographing, or even finding stores where you can purchase one of your own. This actually could be really helpful. Like, think how cool it could be if you come across a flower or a bug and you want to know the name of it, and Bixby could tell you. At the moment, it's pretty hit or miss, so I would love to see this get even smarter over time. But don't worry, if you still want to use good old Google Assistant, you still can the old-fashioned way. So at the end of the day, the S8 was usually still alive. I averaged about four hours of screen on time, but this is where it gets a little weird because by default, the S8 is showing a 1080p picture. So if you want to get the full resolution out of this guy, you go into settings and change it to 1440p. That's what I did. And if you really want to, you can go all the way down to 720p. So yeah, if you're not crazy about all them pixels, just keep it where it's at, at 1080p. It still looks really good. I don't think most people would even notice, and you'll probably get more battery life out of it. There's also some other things worth mentioning, like the fact that there's a USB-C charging port on here, which I love for the reversibility, and also something called Samsung DeX, which turns this phone into a fully functional computer, and I'll definitely be making a video on that in the future. But for now, those are my thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus. Don't forget to subscribe because I got those camera comparisons with the S8 coming up very soon. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see ya later.